President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of new military service chiefs, including a new national security advisor, acting inspector general of police and acting comptroller general of customs. He also appointed new presidential guards and four new advisors. This is contained in a statement from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, which sacked all previous occupants of the positions. Arise News correspondent Ferdinand Duora reports. Barely three weeks after President Paul Atinumbu's inauguration, major shakeups in the polity have opened up mixed reactions from all quarters. The latest is the retirement of service chiefs and their immediate replacements. The new appointments are Malam Nuhu Ribadu, who is the National Security Advisor. Major General Christopher Musa is now the Chief of Defense Staff. Major General T. A. Lagwaja is the Chief of Army Staff. Rear Admiral E. A. Ogala, the Chief of Naval Staff. And Air Vice Marshal Abubakar, the Chief of Air Staff. Major General E. P. Ondurande is the new Chief of Defense Intelligence, while DIG Kyle Diegwetukun is the Acting Inspector General of Police. Also, the President has approved the appointment of Adeni Bashir Adewale as the Acting Controller General of Customs. Similarly, the, decision, the President has approved the appointment of other military officers in the Presidential Villa. Major Issa Farouk Aldo is the Commanding Officer of the State House Artillery. Captain Kazim Olale Konsumon is the second in command of the State House Artillery. Major Kamaru Kuyejo Hamzat is now the acting officer, State House Military Intelligence. Major T.S. Adeola is the commanding officer, State House Armament. The statement of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation says all appointed service chiefs, the Inspector General of Police and the Comptroller General of Customs are to act in their positions pending their confirmation in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Also, the President has approved the appointment of two additional special advisors and two senior assistants, Hadiza Bala Usman, a special advisor policy coordination, while Hanatu Musa Musawa, is the Special Advisor, this Culture and Entertainment Economy. Senator Abdullahi Abubakar Gumel is the Senior Bro Special Bro Assistant Bro on National Assembly Matters for the Senate, while Honorable Olari Waju Kunle Ibrahim is the Senior Special Assistant on National Assembly Matters for the House of Reps. With these appointments, Nigerians will be watching to see in what direction that the appointees will shape the different policies of President Tunumbu. Ferdinand Duroha. Arise News. Well, with I, new announcements. Yeah, new announcements. I mean, I, I, I don't know why people are saying this is tsunami. I saw it coming. I mean, it's only... Some have described it as hurricane. Eh? It's hurricane. Which hurricane? hurricane? For what? A new government will bring in its own new people. So let's stop sensationalizing things. A new government will bring in its own new people to work with. It's as simple as that. So I don't see any hurricane. And also, there was something trendy yesterday. They said there are no Igbo. Uh, there was an incident out there. Let's call a spade a spade. I don't like these institutionalized issues, right? Uh, there was a uh, uh, chief of uh, defense Naval. staff yeah. there. Uh, the chief of naval staff was an uh, is an Igbo person from uh, uh, Enugu State. If I remember, he was in Ogala. Uh, C J uh, Musa, that's chief of defense staff. Uh, Tauri Ta uh, Lagbaja uh, from Ilobu in Oshun State. And uh, you have this, you know, officers here. President Tunubu would definitely work his own, with his own people. But I think the first thing is the departure from what it used to be before. That, you know, before now it used to be a military, former military officer that used to be in charge of, you know, NSA, National Security Advisor. But when you look at it, hitherto, we used to have something called the E branch. It was after the Mortala coup that a lot of things changed and the military pretty much took the reins. But when we return to democracy, under uh, Sheo Shagari, we had somebody of the police extraction become, you know, uh, the, uh, national security advisor. But since the return to democracy in 1990, we've always had military people. There was that talk about the military being a little ambivalent, but the truth is they will learn to work with Nuhu Rivadu. Because the truth is, you need, and in consonance with international best practices, you need that variation in thought process. You need that accountability partner in the NSC that will sit in a domicile position to be able to interpret most of the defense threats and intelligence threats. Also, being an intelligence officer himself, and did a lot of work as regards uh, you know, cracking that area of in the 90s. Also, 
to be able to take the mantle and the reins. So there's a lot that needs to be done as regards our military intelligence. And that's what we found wanting. That's why we're not able to crack down the bad guys. So Nuru had to be in that role at the behest of the president to be able to marshal out a new security architecture. Good for Nigeria. But what we'll judge them by is outcomes. Uh, as regards the military, a new era is coming in, another era is going out. I think it was only, it's only uh, Major General Musa that's of the class of 38, the 38 uh, uh, class here. Uh, uh, General Lagbaja is of uh, the 39 class. And increasingly, we're already moving up to the 40 class in the military. All of these people are there to be able to ensure that they carry out the goal of reading Nigeria off in security. And the truth is, while they congratulate them and celebrate, they should not celebrate too much. Because in a couple of months, if they don't do well, Nigerians will be asking for their head. And it's a clear case of soldier go, soldier come back, so they remain. The most important thing are the outcomes. They've got insurgency, they've got banditry cut out for them, they've got agitations in the southeast cut out for them and other parts of the country. So how they sit down and tackle these things will be good for them. Truth is, and we don't want momentary success. When President Muhammad Buhari came in, in the space of a couple of months, we were able to achieve momentary success, but we couldn't consolidate it. We want lasting success as regards to security in the country. We give them our congratulations, but where they are found wanting, we give them our knocks. And another thing the Navy must look into, and this is a challenge to uh, Navy Magala, is the issue of crude oil theft across our waters, and most importantly, the military too must look strongly as regards this. So, a lot of successes to them. Wish them the very best. But also, we will support them with our criticism. But I saw it coming, definitely. And kudos also to D.I.G. Egbetoku. He comes in well prepared for the job. Uh, okay. I.G. Egbetoku now, I should say. Yeah, acting Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. What are the issues? Let me start with no It is true that some people are saying, oh, why are they making the policeman the national security advisor? Uh, some stories planted, I stress the point, planted in the papers, indicating that the military top brass were saying, oh, we can't report to a policeman. The first thing to note is that the police is the first line of defense yeah. for internal uh, uh, security. And it is not new. Uh, President uh, Tinubu has not done anything new by appointing a policeman as the national security Advisor. In this same country, under Shagari, we had Umaru Shinkafi. Yeah. Umaru Shinkafi was a policeman. Under uh, IBB, we had Gambo Jimeta. Gambo Jimeta was a policeman. Under Abacha, we have Aliyu Ismaila Guazo as National Security Advisor. So we've had policemen in this country uh, before being National Security Advisors. Now, in some other jurisdictions, the United States that we like to quote, many of the national security advisors do not even have a military background, but they probably have intelligence uh, background. And Nuhu Ribadu and the others before him, you know, came from the intelligence background within the uh, Nigeria police. In other words, what is the job of the national security advisor? The National Security Advisor's Office, which is a big, you know, institution within the Nigerian presidency, as is the case elsewhere, as MI5, MI6, uh, who seem to be in the United Kingdom, for example, you know, serves as a bridge between the people and the government in security-related uh, materials. And the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Chuchu Tatu over no Rebadu's uh, appointment is pointless because this is a man who has proven himself as a chairman of the uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. He also has a solid education to back it up. He has a master's in law uh, from the Amadou Bello University. He has also had a stint in uh, Oxford uh, uh, University. But above all of this, you know, he's also a bridge builder a man who is well connected across various constituencies of Nigeria, 
who try to build himself beyond just being an ordinary policeman into uh, somebody of substance within the Nigerian uh, space. And it is not for nothing that he has a direct personal relationship with uh, President Tinubu himself, having been the man that he sponsored previously, you know, as a presidential candidate of the uh, ACN, as uh, that party uh, was known before it dissolved into the uh, uh, bigger platform now known today as the uh, APC. So he comes prepared uh, for the job. As for the service chiefs, well, let's just say, you know, the service chiefs that are leaving, uh, Lucky Rabo and the others, Amao and all the others, you know, well, we congratulate them. Uh, looks like their career in public position has come to an end. Opinion may be divided in terms of what they were able to achieve, what they were no, not able to achieve, but as a service chief, you can only do as much as possible under the uh, commander-in-chief. And it's traditional for a new man in the SADU to change his service chiefs. So I don't think, you know, their uh, disengagement and re subsequent re replacement will come to any one of them as uh, any kind of a surprise. So we have new people there now. And those new people, they are the ones we should focus on. From, uh, you know, uh, Nuri Badu, who is National Security Advisor, uh, GTA Lagbaja, who is Chief of Army Staff, Ogala, EA Ogala, uh, who is uh, Chief of Nava Staff from the Southeast. Initially, when I saw the list, I was looking for an Igbo name. Ogala doesn't sound like uh, an Igbo name. I have a friend, uh, BK Ogala. We call him BK Tunja Ogala. He is from uh, Edo State, so I thought this was a man from Edo State, but eventually we were able to uh, confirm uh, that uh, uh, this Ogala, E.A. Ogala, is from, uh, you know, the southeast, uh, you know, border town between uh, the Middle Belt and uh, the East. So that's why maybe his name doesn't sound so autochthonous because Nigerian names uh, tend to be very autochthonous. So there is no nepotism here. Uh, President uh, Tinubu esca has escaped that. However, what I find curious in some of the appointments is his uh, decision to be naming positions for uh, commanders of the artillery, commanders of the garrison, commanders of uh, the armament. And these are routine uh, military postings. When did we get to a point in Nigeria that uh, the president of Nigeria will be naming uh, commander of brigade of guards, commander of the artillery, commander of the armament, commander of the garrison? I think there's too much detail in that regard. Maybe the president was not properly advised in that uh, regard. As for the new special advisors that have been named, where Adiza Bala Usman distinguished herself with distinction, in my view, as uh, you know, the uh, person in charge of the Nigerian Ports Authority. She was also chief of staff to uh, Nasir uh, Rufai, and she has been uh, very distinguished in the uh, uh, public uh, space. But the position they've given her, they, they, they named her special advisor policy coordination. Policy coordination is primarily the function of the Ministry of National Planning, because it's the Ministry of uh, National Planning that goes through that process, which I described the other time, Young and Queen, uh, 1979, with regard to, and Eze uh, 2022, with regard to uh, uh, policy uh, evaluation. You know. That process, the most critical part of that process is policy monitoring and evaluation. So policy coordination may not really be the issue. I think, you know, they could have named that policy monitoring and evaluation, policy implementation. How do you implement? How do you evaluate? How do you monitor the process? Because here in Nigeria, formulating policy is not a problem. We come up with all kinds of policies every day. The problem is always in the implementation. I hope in defining our role, they will focus more on that. Uh, Anatu, Anatu Musawa has also been deservedly uh, been appointed a special advisor. They put her in charge of cultural entertainment and all of that, but there is a lot uh, that she can also bring to the table. She's a very brilliant uh, you know, young woman, uh, very committed. She served as spokesperson uh, during the campaign, and it's very good to see you know, these persons uh, being rewarded. 
and I didn't I As I I I know him, you know, I, I've known him since he was PRO for customs uh, in Lagos. Yes, many people who know him will remember him, would uh, easily acknowledge the fact that he's a very dutiful uh, person, you know, very committed, very polite, and all of that. And it's good to see a man like him being rewarded, you know, with a major appointment in Nigeria. You know, one of those uh, diamonds, hidden diamonds, uh, who are willing to give and give and give. So I'm personally delighted to see him as a man now in charge of uh, customs. Um, and he, unlike the man that he's replacing, he will not have any issues wearing a uh, uniform. After all, mm -hmm. that was the uniform he used to wear. The military man that uh, Buhari brought there refused to wear uh, customs uh, uniform because he thought it was infra dignitatem. Uh, but, uh, you know, Wale Adeni will be glad to reunite uh, with his uh, colleagues, you know, uh, in the uh, service. There's also uh, Egberto Kunrai, yes, yes. you know, who has been made uh, acting inspector general of uh, police. Well, in that regard, you see President Tinumbu expressing loyalty. When people have served you well, you also look out uh, for them. And I think at a personal emotional level, uh, that is quite uh, instructive. But uh, Kaori Egberto Kun is well educated. He's a man who has improved himself very well you know, uh, in the service and trying to gain a lot of uh, academic uh, knowledge. We hope now that his uh, principal, his boss, uh, he used to be ADC to uh, Tinumbu in Lagos. Now that his boss has remembered him and has put him in charge of uh, the police, that he will also realize that that's a big responsibility. It's not a cynical position. You know, luckily, where well, he doesn't have a big tummy like some of his uh, predecessors. So, but it's beyond that. We hope that he will bring to that task the quality of education that he has been privileged to receive, the knowledge that he has, and his experience as a policeman in the course of his uh, career. So, for all of them, expectations are very high. And, you know, in, in that regard, I think Tinubu personally uh, expects a lot. Finally, I think Tinumbu really is just <laughs> playing what they call rose garden politics. I have written elsewhere, Sorbello saying, you seize the day. He's seizing the momentum. He's consolidating. He's acquiring legitimacy. Uh, on Thursday, he's going to travel to France to go and sign some kind of partnership and all of that. And it's good in terms of optics, uh, what he's doing. You know, just trying to stay ahead of the momentum and present Nigerians uh, more or less with a fairer complaint. The statement with regard to these appointments was issued by Willie Bassey, uh, who works in the office of the uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Well, that's not the office that speaks for the President of Nigeria. Now that we have a special uh, advisor with an omnibus, uh, <laughs> you know, greedy <laughs> portfolio, uh, special advisor, advisor, communication strategy. Look, the most important part of that job is the communication part of it. And the presidency of Nigeria has a very robust communications department. We need to have a spokesperson get onto the job immediately. It's not a secretary to the government of the Federation's office that speaks for the president of Nigeria. The president of Nigeria must take charge of his own communications process, and we should have that department beginning to function, ASAP. Absolutely. Now, a number of things have been said with regards to these new appointments and, of course, following the sacking of the old. Um, I would say that the would leave Nigerians to judge in terms of how the um, previous service chiefs start served and see the lessons that can be learned from the new service chiefs. But I'd like to focus on, um, I mean, a lot has been said about Malam Nuhu Ribadu, uh, his um, credentials. He's not a stranger to a number of people. Some people might um, look back at his tenure as EFCC boss and the reforms and the high profile cases he was able to prosecute as boss and see that as a good perhaps um, a yardstick to judge how his performance would be as NSA. Critical um, uh, position there. Now, 
two things the president has addressed in the um, first few weeks of office. It, the economy, last week inaugurated the National Economy Council and security. And interestingly, these two aspects of, of, the, of, the, of, of, of a nation work you know, sort of hand in hand. You can't have a thriving economy when you have security issues. So even if you handle or settle the economy or um, announce economic reforms, you must be able to make, uh, you know, complementary security changes as well. As has been said already, it was expected. In fact, I do believe that on the day of inauguration, some of the service chiefs would have begun to put their house in order, ready for the new. Now, in terms of the new, um, the chief of defense staff after the NSA is a principal actor when it comes to security in Nigeria. In fact, is the most senior uniformed military officer in terms of um, service in this area. Major General C.G. Musa. I had um, I went to Borno State a few uh, months back, and I had the pleasure of meeting him. At that point, he, had, he was just being deployed from being the theater commander of Hadin Kai, which was the operation in the northeast against Boko Haram. Hadin Kai means um, cooperation, and it had been a name change from Operation Lafia Dole, which, was, which means forced peace, or peace by force. And what, it was, what the transition, particularly in the name change, meant was the the style of operation and the fact that they thought they had made quite an inroad in, def in defeating um, terrorism in the Northeast. And if you recall, during the past administration, the former president had spoken about this a number of times, particularly when he was tackled with regards to how he had handled security matters in Nigeria. And one of their shining stars was how they had been able to, um, you know, to push back in terms of terrorism in the Northeast. And a man who played quite a key role in that was actually Major, CG Musa, Major General C.G. Musa. And beyond just the reports or um, the praise for him, was an opportunity to speak to the people in Meduguri, in Borno State. And if you speak to many of them, they had very good things to say about his leadership, the military presence, and what the military had done in the Northeast, particularly with regards to Boko Haram. So in that in that instance, he was able to do quite well. He was handing over to Major General Ali at that time, and he was you know, a bittersweet one for, the, for his infantry corps. But it's important to highlight this because he's going to be taking a lot more, as has been said. Beyond um, terrorism, there's the issue of banditry. There's the issue of the um, farmer herder clash. And he himself, being from the southern part of Kaduna, and he was born, you know, had quite a stint in Sokoto in the um, northeast, it's hopeful that he will use the experience and intelligence he's been able to gather in the course of his career to do excellently well in this position that he's been elevated to. So that's one area. Now, in terms of the uh, and, and other areas or two other people I'd like to just highlight as well in that um, regard is the new special advisors. The first, of course, Hadiza Bala Usman, who's also been in the news recently, as some people had tried to dig up the case with regards to how she was taken out of the Nigerian Port Authority. There are a number of stories with regards to that. There's a story from the perspective of the Minister of Transportation at the time, um, who was um, Honorable Rotimi Amechi, and of course her own perspective. A woman who has been known not to be afraid to step on toes, hence the name of her book, Stepping on Toes. So the um, the honors and in terms of looking at or, or uh, just trying to analyze or look at the quality of the people whom the president has appointed, it is important to look at their antecedents. And then with Hannah to Musa Musawa, I'm more interested or perhaps speaking to her, um, you know, to her office, special advisor, culture and entertainment economy. Two things, of course, I'm excited about is that we see um, women um, taking on these positions and the fact that the president had made his commitment to involving youths and women in his cabinet, in his portfolio, or on, on, in, in his government. But very interesting is what would the culture and entertainment economy handle? One thing we've spoken about a number of times is the potential of this industry. Beyond entertainment, music, fashion, you know, Dr. Bati, you always talked about a culture economy. And so we're hoping that it will not just be a title or just a position, but that it would actually, it would be a role that's clearly defined to push that aspect of Nigeria because it is potential that has not been maximized or tapped fully in, la in previous administrations. Well, congratulations to the, new, um, to the new appointees and we're looking forward to them, you know, delivering on their duties.